My name is Amanda. I'm 33 years old. It's all in the past now, but to find closure from an unpleasant memory, I'd like to share a bit of my story. This happened about two years before I got married. Well, at the time, I was dating a man I met at a group blind date. His name was Luke. He was two years older than me. He worked for a renowned company, was excellent at his job, and was quite handsome. Place than they must. He's a part of these. He was such a gentleman that when we first met at the blind date, I wondered why on earth he was still single. We hit it off right away, and we went on many dates on weekends. Shortly afterward, he proposed to me at the top of a Ferris wheel. Back then, I was eager to get married because I couldn't think of a reason to say no. We introduced each other to our families. His family seemed all seal... ...sing kind. All the family members seemed to be close with each other, especially between Luke and his younger sister. Everything was going smoothly up to this point. I soon found out why Luke had... Kissam remained single. He was a tad too close to his sister. To be more precise, it was Luke who was obsessed with her. When he introduced me to his family, he was particularly anxious about her reaction. Though his parents seemed to like me, I started feeling a bit uneasy about whether I should really get married. My suspicions were right. One day, when he returned from an overseas business trip, he, he suggested a family get-together. So we all gathered at his parents' house. He told me I was practically family. It made me feel like I was accepted, so I happily agreed. After Luke shared stories it's about his overseas experiences, he started handing out souvenirs. First, he gave his parents some famous chocolates from the country he visited. Oh, these look delicious, said his parents. Then, gifted his sister a designer handbag. He bought it at duty-free shop. Oh, I've been wanting this bag for so long, she exclaimed. I was next. I wondered what he got for me. He chuckled without any scent of remorse. Oops, I forgot, he said. The room filled with an awkward silence. I thought it was not a big deal because he simply forgot. I hoped his childlike nature would change after we got. He simply married. I tried to not care about it anymore and went home. I didn't bring it up since then because I felt like it might open up a can of worms. I was eager to get married. At that time, I was obsessed with marriage. After a while, Luke and I planned to go to an amusement park. Since he had forgotten to buy me a souvenir, I secretly hoped he would make it up to me this time around. As Kristen waited in front of the amusement park. I saw Luke waving at me from a distance. Looking closer, there was another person with him, his sister. I was taken aback as I wasn't informed about this. Um, well, it's been a while since we've been to an amusement park. Um, isn't it natural to bring my sister along? I wasn't told about this. We should share fun moments with family, right? It's not about, um, whether I told you or not. Geez, you're really narrow-minded. His sister looked awkward seeing the quarrel between us, so I tried to hold back my anger. But my frustration kept building. Well, I forget my wallet. You have yours, right? That's in the end. I had to cover the entire amusement park entrance fee, and Luke only paid attention to his sister, not me. I was so dumbfounded, all I could do was look up at this guy.
And then the defining day came. It, it was around my birthday. He forgot to buy me a souvenir and made me pay the entrance fee. I had put up with so much. I was hoping this time would be wonderful. Luke had made a reservation at a well-established restaurant. When I heard that, I was overjoyed, and all my previous frustrations vanished. A trail the day came. I put on my favorite dress and did my makeup nicely. As we enjoyed our meal and conversation at the restaurant, Luke's phone rang. I had a bad feeling. Of course, it was his sister. Yeah, I got it. I'll be right there. Um, I'll be right there. As he hung up the phone, and then casually said, My sister needs me, so I gotta go. What? Why? She lives alone, and she saw a cockroach in her room. She wants me to come over to get rid of it. I need to go ASAP. No, please stay with me today. Ellie, I pleaded, but he left the restaurant without even paying the bill. Kristen, I couldn't eat half the meal and ended up paying for both of us. I felt like our relationship was over. A few days later, I got a message from him asking to break up and our marriage plan was over. After breaking up with Luke, I was down for a while, but as time passed and I gained clarity, I felt it was a blessing in disguise. Even if we had made it to marriage, I couldn't see Luke's personality or relationship with his sister changing. It would have been a constant struggle. Gradually, my feelings shifted, and I started catching up on all the work I had piled up during my relationship with him. I often worked late, usually being the last person to leave the office. That day, I was working overtime again. I thought I was the only one left, but my colleague was still there. He is two years younger than me. We're not in the same team, so we usually just exchange greetings. He was handling a major project, and I always thought he was quite handsome. But while he was looking down, he suddenly looked up and our eyes met just as I looked up from my computer. You've been staying late a lot lately, haven't you? He had such a pleasant voice. Well, I'm just trying to catch up on work, like homework back in the day. He laughed, haha. I'm in the same boat. It never seems to end. It's different for you. You're tackling a big project while I'm just doing routine tasks. So, your work is much more important. Then he casually asked, how about dinner after works? Um... After work, we went to a local diner and chatted over our meals. A terrible breakup I'd experienced became a laughing matter. Do I go with me? I was so taken aback. My mind went blank. Excess. I had been through a huge breakup just a few months before, but I followed my heart. It was a straightforward yes. Life is full of surprises. Even though our new relationship began, it didn't change a lot between us. Still texting and eating out at the diner as usual. It was very natural. However, one thing did change. Our weekends, we always visited each other's apartments and watched movies. I looked forward to it a lot in weekdays. We dated like this for a while. One day, just after we finished watching a movie at his apartment, he said, this movie was really nice. I hope we can have days like this forever. Will you marry me? I was surprised, but I was very happy. Yes, absolutely, I responded. But to be honest, when I started dating him, I was still holding on to the pain from the past. But he taught me to be myself. I vowed to let go of the past and face the future with him. Before we got married, we moved in together. 
Then one day, amidst our peaceful routine, my phone rang. It was Luke. I didn't want to recall the past, so I ignored it. However, he kept calling. Pick up the phone. Let's talk. Too little, too late. Oh, the initial voicemail said, Once you break up with me and you're alone, you've realized there's no man better than me with condescending phrases like, I'll forgive everything you did to me. But... He slays minds this perception was perhaps being ignored got to him because gradually his messages became more pleading like gape he's answer the phone with a hint of tears in his voice just let me talk to you once he added i couldn't take it anymore so i blocked his calls next then he started texting me of course i left all his messages on red and never replied we could have blocked him immediately, but we once promised to marry each other, so emotions got in the way and I couldn't do it. I figured it would be best to firmly explain the situation, so I replied to him. I'm glad you seem well. I'm getting married to my new boyfriend. Please don't contact me anymore. Getting married? Are you being forced? I'll save you. I'm your prince. I'll turn, I'll turn any crisis into an opportunity. I had to discuss it with my fiance. I told him the whole story. I, sh I should just blocked him. Replying out of sympathy wasn't a good idea. When I honestly told him everything, he smirked. Leave this to me. Can I borrow your phone? I'll reply to him instead of you, but don't tell him that. From then on, whenever Luke texted, my fiancé replied on my behalf. At first, the exchanges were just refusals to his pleading messages like, Please meet me, let me talk to you. But as days went by, things got weirder. Quickly, one day, he sent me a poem. You're the yolk, and I'm the egg white. Without both of us, you can't make an omelette. Let's make one together. My fiancé and I burst into laughter. Then Luke sent a voice message saying, Now listen to my feelings, followed by his self-composed love song. It was so hilarious. We laughed even harder. He kept sending what he thought were romantic messages not realizing that he was actually communicating with my fiancé all along. It was really hilarious. Eventually, my fiancé said is getting no well. I'll meet him in person. Let's meet with your parents and your sister. I have something important to discuss. We weren't sure how he'd react, but we sent a somewhat leading message from our end. On the day of the meeting, me, my fiancé, Luke and his family met up at a restaurant. There was a tense atmosphere, but, but only Luke seemed to think that things would go his way, wearing a smug smile. However, when he saw my fiancé sitting next to me, he blurted out, Who's that? He is my fiancé. And... He seemed to have forgotten about what I told him and said, um, but I proposed you first and I'm better than him. So it's your fault in the first place for not treating my sister right. But I've... Gunner is saying, I'd forgive you. That's when my fiance, who'd been quiet all along, spoke up. She clearly told you through the text not to contact her anymore. He probably forced her to say that, right? Um... Actually, I asked him to reply to you instead of me. To that, finally, I clarified. Old Chihuahua. Geek's mouth hung open in shock. She's been mentally drained because you've been contacting her so often. That's why I've been the one responding to messages. You always looked down on her and berated her. There's no way a man like you could marry her. He calmly stated. But I proposed to her first. What was he even talking about? 
He still didn't get it. You're the one who said it's over, right? It's done. I'm marrying him now, so never contact me again. I firmly told him. What, what about me? Did you ever think about my position at work? This is outrageous. As he shouted and made a scene, his father, with a stern face, spoke up. Who's being outrageous here? You told us you had something to talk about, but what on earth were you thinking? You're the one who broke things off. Why are you still asking her to get back with you? Explain to me. His father's sudden outburst made Luke's eyes widen in surprise. Thars, um, well, I announced at work that I was getting married. I would be embarrassing that I didn't get married. I wanted to find someone else, but I couldn't find the right one. I thought Amanda still liked me, so I thought she'd easily come back to me if I just reached out. Um, just for that reason. His father's face turned red with rage. The desperately looked at his beloved younger sister with pleading eyes. You're so disgusting. She really dislikes you now. You have to give up on her. It was shocking. Isn't being scolded even by his dear sister, Luke looked like he was about to cry. But I'm deeply sorry for my son's disgraceful behavior. I swear you won't act like this again. Please forgive us. Exits factor. As his father pulled Luke back, Luke hit the table with a loud thud. It's my fiancé, and they almost burst out laughing at the ridiculous scene, but held it in given the seriousness of the situation. We never heard from Luke again after that day. Later, I heard he made a big blunder at work and got fired. I heard that his parents, feeling the weight of raising such a failure, sent him to work on a farm in the countryside. The environment and the work are apparently tough. And his sister got married, which shocked him even more. Fiancé and I got married and are now living happily. I'm five months pregnant. We can't wait to see our baby. East family is precious. We must help each other out in tough times, but one wrong move can lead to irreversible consequences. And one shouldn't rush into marriage. I know it sounds preachy, but please take this advice from someone who's been through such a dramatic situation. I hope you won't experience something awful like this.